Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. Another day? Dad, what are you talking about? Marty? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. What are you talking about? What's the matter, Dad? Are you in trouble or something? This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Mom, it's Marty, Mom. Open up. It sounds like Marty, but it must be a trick. Mom! Go away. Shame on you. How can I convince you? Tell me something. Only Marty would know. Ah. The first time he kissed Mom, it was at the enchantment under the sea dance. That's right. Oh, my Lord. What are you waiting for, George? Let him in. Stupid locks. Marty! Oh, my God, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff. I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who were they? Yeah, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. Where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Ugh. I got a question. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back. The thing with the manure truck? Which one? Ooh. Hey! And another thing. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back, so the kid gloves can come off. Tell me. How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. <laughs> Here's what I still don't understand. Can't you pick on somebody else? We do! We pick on lots of guys! It's kind of our thing. Biff! So now the Tannins are some kind of minor league mafia? Hey, watch who you're calling minor league! The Tannin Gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. But we got connections all over the place. No way. <laughs> you don't believe me? No! Bang! <laughs> Check it out. To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. That's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California. Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley messes with the Tannen family. Marty, get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding!
Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez, they robbed the arcade. We've got to go back to the day Kid Tannen was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannins. Not an option, Doc. Punch it. Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, a singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let Kid know if you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, no? At least you possess enough shame to lie about it. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Lost your self-respect, but you should care. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Sonny. Sonny, Mr. Crockett, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment! You're not angry about the rocket drill? <sighs> Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance, I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Einie and I have been up to. Famous last words. Alright, now where's that speakeasy? Sonny, you're just in time. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes, that argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science! What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but that'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Wow! 
Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a Depression-era flophouse. How are your investigations going? Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I travel back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered, sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kit Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served with a subpoena. And shot by Kid Tanner's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannins were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather.
Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public you safety. You know it represents a clear and present danger to public safety. Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Who told you to come here? Hieronymus Bosch? What will you do tomorrow? Row my boat? Where do you hang your hat? Hattiesburg. Welcome to L Kid, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. What people Hey, bartender. What'll it be? I'm happy. Go lucky. So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having tipped off one Irving Kid Tannen. Were the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly fink. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Should I come back for it? Suit yourself. Nah.